Hello everyone, this is Lieutenant Colonel Evangelista. Uh, this video is going to discuss sensitivity analysis for linear programs. The video was created for EM384, uh, however it, uh, it applies broadly um, to across a number of classes that we teach in the Department of Systems Engineering at West Point, um, so please feel free to use it as you see fit. This um, sensitivity analysis discussion will be motivated by problem 9.7 uh, from, from your textbook. This is a quick snapshot of the, uh, the problem description. And you can see that the problem has been formulated um, and handwritten. Uh, on the right hand side I imported that, uh, that image and then it has also been formulated and inputted into the uh, uh, computer for uh, the sake of, of solving. Um, a few uh, things that have been prepositioned or formatted. So I have the decision variable cells highlighted in yellow, which is my typical convention along the top. Uh, the objective function along with the sum product uh, formula that's necessary to calculate it uh, is highlighted in red. The left hand side of all my constraints are are green and the sum product formulas again have been already um, created. These less than or equal in signs are just simply a, a note. It's nothing more than like a comment. And then the right hand sides here um, are parameters of the equation or of the formulation and are hard coded in, as are all of the coefficients that are uh, within the um, constraint um, coefficients that are shown here as well as the objective function coefficients shown here. So to frame the problem just a little bit, um, we have uh, this idea that there's um, electronic and battery operated or powered um, smoke alarms um, and there's, there's essentially four different types. So you have electronic units that you produce, battery units that you produce, and then there's this idea that you can subcontract and sell electronic units and you can subcontract and sell battery units. There's a cost as well as a revenue um, associated with each and that's depicted in this first expression right here. Um, so I will leave it to the students to reread the problem and, and, and understand how this particular formulation uh, fell out but the bottom line is that this final objective function formulation that's shown here and the same coefficients are reflected here on the um, Excel sheet, um, that represents the profit um, that can be achieved by um, selling each of those, those units. Um, but that's subject to a number of constraints, fabrication, assembly, shipping, um, as well as demand. Okay, so let's get right into solving this. I'm going to go through the mechanics just to, for the sake of reviewing that. Um, so if we're using analytic solver platform, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going I'm to highlight my decision variables. I'll go to analytic solver uh, platform, um, decisions, normal, Okay, and they populate. And one thing I can't see right now is I can't see the view. There we go. So I just need to click on that model button. Sorry for that pause. So we can see that the variables have been populated here. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and identify my constraints. So I'll click on that. I'm going to cell reference the left hand side. Okay. They're all less than or equal to. The right hand side, I'll cell reference the, that range as well. And you can do that as a range when they're all uh, uh, the same direction. When these are different directions or equalities, you do have to add them separately. I'll click OK and you can see again that populates here. And then I'm going to click on the objective drop down the objective, this is a max and it's normal and it populates right here. Now for some reason any of these were not what you wanted, you just double click on it, dialog box opens, you can change it. Once those three components, the three components that we've talked about in class uh, uh, for a linear program have been established in Solver, then what I can do is go to the engine, make sure that standard LP quadratic engine is selected, I will make sure that my flag for assume non-negative is set to true. Okay, and right down here, 
Lieutenant Colonel Evangelista would receive a minus one because he did not write the final constraint, which is x sub i should be greater than or equal to zero, and that represents that non-negativity. So that's something I missed actually in my formulation right here. So we set that flag. We go to our output. We hit go. Skip the guidance. And we get a solution. So we can see here from the solution um, the number of electronic units produced, battery units produced, electronic units subcontracted and sold, and we're not producing any of these uh, battery units subcontracted and sold. So as I mentioned at the beginning, what we're interested in is we're interested in sensitivity analysis. And that, that idea, what it's all about is, hey, what if something in this model changes? So what if a right-hand side over here changes? What if for some reason we can have more fabrication capacity or assembly capacity or shipping capacity? Or what if demand changes? Those are all questions that we can answer with sensitivity analysis. We can also explore what happens if any of these coefficients change up here. Okay, and there's other aspects, but those are the two primary ones uh, that we're interested in with sensitivity analysis. So I'm going to delete this because I want to show you how to create it from uh, from scratch or from from the state right here. So what I would do is I would go up here, and this has to happen after you have successfully run your model. I'm going to click on Reports, Optimization. I get this drop down here, and I'm going to click Sensitivity. And you can see that the sensitivity report um, appears. Okay, and this. Uh, uh, sensitivity report is showing me um, my final value for um, the uh, objective function, final value for my decision variables, and then we're going to get into this idea of reduced cost and shadow price. So what I'm going to need to do to do that is, let me just bring these two over. This is another sensitivity report. That, that other one was not quite what I wanted. It was during some exploration. But this is a sensitivity report that I'm going to want to discuss. So right here, what we have is not necessarily, I, I don't like this idea of uh, sensitivity analysis on decision variables. I'm going to, I'm going to delete that. Because we're really not doing sensitivity analysis on decision variables. What we're doing is we're doing sensitivity analysis on constraint, or I'm sorry, objective function coefficients. That's what reduced cost is exploring. So it's trying to understand how the solution will change if the objective function coefficient changes. So going back to our formulation, right? what are our objective function coefficients? 10.7, 12, 8, and 6.5 which are shown right here as well. If those change, does our solution change? Well, that's what the sensitivity analysis is exploring in this top part here. So what you can see is this idea of reduced cost is displayed, and this is one of the concepts that you're going to want to understand. So reduced cost is explained right here. How much the objective function coefficient of each decision variable would have to improve before that particular decision variable that it's associated with is included in the optimal solution. So the first three decision variables have no um, reduced cost because they're already in the, so the, if, we, if we change it, change, they may drop out of the um, solution, but they won't be introduced. However, the fourth decision variable, the battery unit subcontracted and sold, was not part of the problem. And you can see here that if we change the objective function coefficient by 3.7, it will in fact include that um, decision variable. Now this negative sign is what that is, is that's an artifact of um, really the, the optimization, which uh, within optimization what you, what you have to uh, uh, understand is that typically we are solving um, minimization functions. Because this is a maximization function, 
that negative is in there. But don't let that confuse you. What I want you to focus on is I want you to focus on this over here, this allowable increase and allowable decrease. What this is telling you is this is telling you that this is the range of values that that um, coefficient can span and the basis, the, the variables that are included in the solution will not change. All right, so let's explore that just for a second. Remember that number 3.7. So we'll go back here and the allowable increase was 3.7. So if we do just a, a little bit of mental math, okay, 3.7 plus 6.5, 9.5, 10.2. So if I introduce, let's say, 10.1, okay, we should not see a change. All right, so let's see what happens. I'm going to I'm going to run this again. Skip the guidance. Okay, and you can see here that we still are not subcontracting any of these. However, if I change this to 10.2 and I run, skip the guidance. All right, again, nothing changes. But now, how about 10.25? Skip the guidance. Aha! Now we do have a change, right? So you can see as soon as you go over that limit that was established, okay, that allowable increase, now you have introduced a new decision. And this could be very substantial, I mean, because the subcontracting could represent significant work that your company has to do to establish a relationship. So that example there um, introduces the idea of, I'm going to change that back so I don't forget introduces the idea of reduced cost. Okay, so again, it's, it's, it's this idea of an allowable increase. It's how much the objective function coefficient for a decision variable would have to, to improve before it's included in the optimal solution. Now let's talk about this idea of shadow prices. Okay, so reduced costs, they focused on the coefficients of the objective function. Shadow prices focus on the constraints, and specifically they're focusing on the right-hand side of the constraint. So if we think about this just conceptually for a moment, the right-hand side of any constraint is representing a limit. It's telling you you only have this much capacity. That's typically what it represents. Okay, Or it may be a minimum requirement. That's possible too. Okay, But it's some kind of a limit that exists on the model. Well, what if we can expand our limit a little bit? How much is that worth to us? Okay, so and that's what a shadow price is is showing us. Um, so let's look at the definition. Okay, it's a um, it's the shadow price for a constraint is the change in the value of the optimal solution per unit increase in the right hand side of the constraint. So I know that's 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 probably a little bit abstract, maybe difficult to get your head wrapped around. So let's look at some of these values over here. The first thing I want you to notice is I want you to notice that the shadow price for the first, fourth, and fifth constraints are, you know, positive values. But the second and third constraint are zero. That's so telling us is, hey, you know, the assembly and shipping, they're not having an impact on your on your solution. Let's see how that shook out when we look here. Okay, What we should see, and I'm going to have to solve this again, just bear with me, to get back to our original solution. But what we should see is we should see the first, the fourth, and the fifth constraints binding. So let's go back to our sensitivity. Yeah, first, fourth, fifth. The second and third are not binding. So look at here. The second and third, you have slack in these two. Right? You're not pushing those constraints to their limits, but you are with the first, the fourth, and the fifth constraints. So now, what that's saying is, hey, your extreme point for this solution is running up against those limits, those constraints. So the question is, okay, well, well, what if I grow one of those constraints? What if I can get 
one more unit of those constraints. So what the shadow price is saying is, hey, let's say battery demand, okay? So the fifth constraint. If I increase that by one, well, my objective function should go increase by 10.2. Well, let's, let's try it. So here we are. I'm gonna increase this by one. Solve it. Skip the guidance. All right, and there you have it. That just increased by 10.2. Okay, once again, we run up right against tight to this constraint. Okay, and that's an illustration of what the shadow price was for the battery unit demand. So I think that's probably about enough, at least for the video. Um, I hope this was somewhat informative. Good luck as you uh, make your way through EM384 and your West Point experience, and uh, we'll see you around Mahan Hall.